today is Noc Kupały, known as Kupala Night, a shortest night of the year. It's a traditional Slavic holiday celebrated in several countries, including Poland and Ukraine, and it is closely associated with the summer solstice. Kupala Night has its roots in pre-Christian pagan rituals and beliefs. It is a celebration of the fertility of nature and the power of the sun. The holiday is named after Kupala, a Slavic goddess associated with love, fertility and water. During Noc Kupały, people gather around bonfires and engage in various customs and rituals. They often sing and dance, wearing traditional costumes. One of the most popular traditions is the lighting of bonfires, which symbolizes the power of the sun and is believed to have purifying properties. It's also common for people to jump over bonfires or leap into rivers and lakes, as it is believed to bring good luck and protect against evil spirits. It is also customary to create wreaths made of flowers and release them into the water, symbolizing the casting away of worries and negative energy. The English name for Noc Kupały is often translated as Ivan Kupala Night or simply Midsummer Night. It shares similarities with other midsummer celebrations in different cultures around the world. It's one of my favorite traditions that I find fascinating and magical. Connected with Kupala Night is the legend about the flower of the fern. It adds an aura of enchantment and mystery to the celebration. By the way, just very quickly, I've made this bezel with a gallery wire, just like this. According to the Slavic folklore, it is said that on the eve of Kupala night, the elusive flower of the fern blooms for a brief moment, revealing its magical and captivating beauty. The flower of the fern is believed to possess incredible powers, granting anyone who finds it on Kupala night with great fortune, wisdom and the ability to understand the secret language of nature. It is said that this extraordinary flower only appears in the most secluded and hidden places, deep within the forests or near the banks of rivers and lakes. The legend tells of brave individuals who venture into the wilderness on Kupala night, searching for the flower of the fern. They face numerous challenges, including magical obstacles and mischievous spirits guarding the secret of the flower. Those who succeed in finding the flower are granted its gifts and gain insight into the natural world. However, finding the flower of the fern is no easy task. It requires courage, perseverance and a deep connection to nature. The legend adds an air of adventure and excitement to Natsuko Power, encouraging people to embark on their own quests, both literal and metaphorical, in search of hidden treasures and inner enlightenment. This jewelry design I'm making today is inspired by Kupala Night and the legend of the fern flower. I wanted to create something intricate and unique, just like the flower of the fern. I've decided to change silver back sheet to brass.
Unfortunately, my camera died just when the flux was about to flow, but you can see here that it worked and the bezel has been soldered onto the back plate. How do you like my construction here? I am soldering fern onto the back plate now. This will be a hidden flower of the fern that I'm going to solder inside of the bezel. And on top of it, I've added a little bezel in which I'm going to set a little gemstone or maybe a pearl. I haven't decided yet. This is what we call an ugly stage in which you really really have to trust the process because right now it doesn't look good <laughs> I've left some space over here to add a little beaded wire. I thought it might look better like this instead of fern just randomly growing out of the back sheet. So I've decided to solder it on. Unfortunately, some accidents happen. <laughs> My jump ring fell off, but that's okay. I've soldered it on next. And that's how it looks like now. I am very happy how it looks like, but I still feel like it's not, it's not finished. So let's add some patina onto it and just create some dimension and bring some details out. This darkening always helps to bring more definition to the metal.
Now, last step is to set the stone and I think this whole jewelry piece will get its soul once the stone has been set. I think that's the missing part and that's something that will turn it into something actually very, very beautiful. This is an old tool I found at an antique shop. I think it might be dentist tool or maybe something for the nails. I'm not sure, but it's perfect to get into those narrow spaces where you have to close the bezel around the gemstone, but nothing really fits in there. Definitely not a bezel pusher like this. So that tool is brilliant for that. And while I was finishing, <laughs> sadly, that beaded wire fell off. It must not have been soldered on properly, but it's okay. I've decided I will just finish it without it and just file down the edge. So come and see how it looks like now. I am so happy with the final effect. I hope you love it as much as I do. I think it really does look like a tiny piece of the forest that you have in your hand. <laughs> and inside you can see a magical flower of the fern hidden, but also visible to anyone who is brave enough to look for it. And the ferns and leaves around the gemstone complement it and decorate it. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I am very happy how it turned out. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. Let me know if you like irregular creative pieces like this one. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you in the next one. Bye!